Magic players have asked me the question, just how well is Duskmorn selling after we've had this commander banning announcement? In today's video, we're going to discuss how the products are selling and what you can expect to find at your local LGS. I thought I would start today's video by just admitting the truth. The frustration, the anger, and the outrage over the commander bannings has gone nowhere. Just because some other content creators go out there and say why the reasons were and this is why they chose to do it doesn't make it any better for the people who lost money. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here, and thank you again for hanging out with me on my channel today. It is very frustrating, and I can understand that as well. The most obvious thing being, when those cards got banned, the Jeweled Lotus, Dockside Extortionist, and of course Mana Crypt, thousands of people lost money. Easily. Millions of dollars wiped out of the market. And then players asked me, well, just how well? Is Duskmorn selling after all the fiasco we've been dealing with the last couple of days? How do the sales now rack up to the events and the aftermath? Are we seeing an impact in the sales data? Are we seeing people cancel orders, walk away, and all that crazy stuff? Well, we're going to talk about it because it's obviously something that's on a lot of players' minds. Players want to feel some kind of revenge, redemption thing right now. They want to find a way to strike back at Wizards of the Coast. I can understand that sentiment, I can understand that frustration, that level of anger, seeing cards you value and you've been using for years and have a high price tag just get wiped out. We can all just say it, it's true, it's gone, it's very frustrating, very angry, and I'm probably underselling it for a lot of players, and I apologize if I can't put the same emphasis that some people might put on that, but I, I, I get it. Now, when you're talking about a set like Duskmorn, Let's remember that a lot of the pre-orders went in a long time ago, before all these announcements came out. Um, and that means a lot of the sales data by this point is locked in. And release date is tomorrow. But when I'm filming this, you're watching it on the day of release. But I filmed it the night before. So I've got the most current data that I could scrape together on all the box sales. I checked out all the stores I'm dealing with, who has stock, who doesn't have stock, and where things are leveled out at. So we'll start with that. First, we're going to go and take a look at what's going on on things like TCG Player. Well, guys, if you look here on the 26th going backwards, there isn't even a full page of sales. The box prices here are $227.90 US, plus any shipping and fees and stuff, but we're only talking like 18, 19 sales. That's not a lot for a single day of a product like this. Yeah, four or $5,000, whatever. It could be people trading up, doing things. It's not a massive amount of sales. It doesn't have really an impact, and it kind of lets you know that it looks like there's a little bit of frustration, right? So when I take you to the next one, which is going to be Amazon.com, they have a thing here saying it's sold over um, 2,000 boxes, okay? Now, 2,000 boxes is actually about on par with what we've seen in the last number of releases of products, okay? Even even things like Murders at Karlov Manor hit the 2K mark. Um, Bloomberg, of course, was far beyond that. Outlaws of Thunder Junction was like 3K at that point. So it's all kind of, it's in the range. So nothing here says there's been a massive outrage, a big jumpstart anger thing, as much as we wish there may have been for some of us, nothing. It is calm and collected and business as usual, as frustrating as that may be to hear for some of you. Nothing's gone wrong. But the sales have gone no higher either. If anything, they seem to be petering out, okay? They don't seem to have any any spark to carry them forward there's nothing driving more sales and there's probably a number of reasons and those will be kind of like i don't have the money i'm facing wallet fatigue right now from just too many products i'm only gonna buy the singles and even of those singles i'm tending to buy the lower price singles for fear of reprinting now i understand that there'll be no reprints for a product like this for a long time if any cards hit it big but players are aware of it and some players are just choosing to buy cards they absolutely need from the singles market right now to start out their decks. And that's about it. 
So the market is doing fine, but there's nothing to say it's doing fantastic either. There's only one product inside Duskmorn, which is beyond what we've seen in the past. And most of you are probably aware of this. So when I show you this slide, you probably recognize that the House of Horrors bundle, $89.99, and of course still available and stuff, but when you look at this, it is selling exceptionally well. 10,000 plus units moved. This is way beyond anything we've seen for like, I can't remember counting it and seeing it this high. So none of my, none of my archives say anything above 5K. So this is huge, okay? This is a massive selling product that a lot of players have keyed in on. When you follow this through with what we've now seen though, the real, the real test is going to be foundations, MTG foundations, reprints with new cards. That's the set that is most likely to fail and feel the retribution of the magic masses. If anyone's going to be sacrificed on the altar of revenge, it is going to be MTG foundations. A lot of reprint cards, prices that most players aren't really happy with, a collector box that's probably unnecessary, and no matter what they put in it, players aren't probably going to buy into it very much after what they've gone through. Now, of course, there'll be some commander staples in there to draw the crowd in. And honestly, if you take any conspiracy theories seriously, this would be the set they might drive some new product into to replace some of the cards we've lost. As scary as that may sound, um, some people out there are actually believing this set's going to be loaded to get the attention off of what was just announced. Because if the conspiracy holds true, then of course, this is all part of a big Machiavellian plan to get to the end result, which was banning those cards, making us forget about it and move on to something new and be accepting of this new level of power that will be coming in, the new cards, the new trinkets to drive those sales home. I don't know if you have to accept it for that, but a lot of players are thinking it. I have a lot of emails that back that up. So you can take that for what it is, but it's something to at least think about and wonder how players are feeling about these product lineups afterwards. If there was any product I would say was going to fail, it would be MTG Foundations at this point. But as we um, take a closer look at Duskmore, the singles market, especially locally, has been quite robust. The collector boxes have been very slow to move, and many stores have available stock here in Canada and places I've checked in the U.S. and a couple places over uh, in the U.K. No one had any trouble. They'll, they're going to have stock. It's going to be fine. Now, they're not sure about what happens after allocation. They, you know, After these boxes sell, they may have to wait weeks and weeks. They don't know if they can get more. But initially, there's going to be product on the store shelves when you watch this video. And they don't expect it to move because pre-orders already have gone through. Play booster boxes are moving slow. They're still selling, but they're selling slow. And a lot of players are teaming up and sharing boxes. When they do any kind of drafting now, it's not one player buying a whole box. It's like four, five, six friends splitting a box now, and that's due to the cost. And a lot of players have just noted that as that's why they're not buying it. They're frustrated with the pricing, and they're not happy about, about the idea of having to pay that much for a box. So it's just slowed down the sales as an overall market margin. But again, it's something to keep in mind, because that means it won't be restocked as often. And the long-term effects of sealed product being readily available versus being reprinted are two entirely different things. Readily available means it's there, it's in the store. But if that store doesn't ask for a reprint from distribution and then distribution kicks that up to Wizards of the Coast, you may have a shortage of boxes five years from now where normally we used to have a big glut in the market. And that's just Wizards of the Coast tightening the reins, trying to make things more collectible again. But that will ultimately fail. And I believe it will ultimately fail because they don't back it up with the reprint policy. They don't back it up with making sure these cards are only found in those products because after they sell it to us, they really don't care what happens afterwards. And we shouldn't forget that. We just know there's a time frame in which these cards will get reprinted. So I hope you guys found this video informative. I hope you can take away from this kind of how it's going to play out for Duskmorn. And probably the closer thing we should pay attention to is, of course, MTG Foundations. So thank you again for stopping by my channel. And a reminder, if you're new to my channel, if you somehow found me here and you want to support the channel, you can just like and subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell, as I do put out new content every single day. And we're only around 650 subs from getting to the 25,000 subscriber mark. And that's because of you all out there. So thank you very much for supporting my channel. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow. Time will heal all wounds, I guess. But I really don't feel that's how most people think about it right now. Thanks again. Drop some comments. We'll see you tomorrow.
Wait a second. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's the top 10. Guys, Saturday edition top 10. You do not want to miss what's been going on with all these banned cards. I have the numbers. We'll see you then. Now I'm good. Maybe we're good. All right, I'm leaving.